and spirit inside our heart and pray for the welfare of the whole humanity. Shanti, shanti. Peace, peace, peace be unto all. Om Sthapakaya ca dharmasya sarva dharmasvarupine Sthapakaya ca dharmasya sarva dharmasvarupine avatara varishthaya Rama Krishna Yate Nama Asatoma Sad Gamaya Tamasoma Jotir Gamaya Asatoma Sad Gamaya Tamasoma Jotir Gamaya Mrityor Maam Ratangamaya Om Shanti 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 Offer our salutations to Sri Ramakrishna who has shown the practical ways to reach God who has shown how to live in this world without getting entangled how to perform one's duties in the world at the same time be not attached to the world. It's a technique, a unique technique which has been given by Sri Ramakrishna so that everyone can practice spirituality even if he is in the world. That is really wonderful thing. What is there in this world after all? There is more misery than happiness. There is more grief and sorrow. There is more pain than anything else. So, how to make our life in spite of all these uh, difficult situations, circumstances, how to live our life joyfully, that Sri Ramakrishna has very clearly shown the way if at all we aspire for real joy in the world. But many people, they just don't uh, want this type of spiritual joy which they think might be very difficult for them to achieve. But Sri Ramakrishna has warrant if we do not give proper attention to our ways of doing the things, then nobody can save us. We will be more and more in bondage. <coughs> we will be more and more in the world. Again and again, you will have to come to this world and suffer and suffer and suffer. Unless we change the attitude, there is no way of getting out of suffering. It means we must know. Probably through suffering, some people will come to know whether there is any way. Well, That is why Sri Ramakrishna is very particular about these things. In the last class, I have read from page 81 to 82, it deals with uh, <coughs> these practical hints. Two things he has 
very clearly pointed out. One is to take control of the mind. Use the mind properly. Secondly, the process of which are, that is, analysis. You must constantly distinguish what is real and what is unreal. The idea is when you are sure that that certain thing is not real, it means you must reject it. It means you must not worry over the unreal things. And then he has shown how to make use of this mind. How to get into the spiritual life. In a very simple way, Sri Ramakrishna has shown the ways of keeping this mind clear. What it is, he first says, repeat the name of the Divine Lord. Let it be any name of the God but you must know it is divine name. Repeat the name constantly. Sing his glories. Keep holy company. Make more visits to devotees. These are some of the important ways of fixing the mind on God. Then, of course, we have to practice meditation. Before stepping into meditation, we must go into solitude where we would be able to think deeply without any external disturbance. There you have to discriminate between the real and the unreal. Whenever you conclude that certain things are not real because they constantly keep on changing. So once you are convinced about the unreality of things, you must immediately be ready to get rid of them. Your mind must not be allowed to dwell on such matters. <clears throat> now, sometimes people would ask, Master, how are we to live in the world? No, we can't go away from the world. We are having family, children. So many things are connected with us. It is not at all easy for us to... Uh, shake off everything, renounce everything, get away to forest or some place where one can completely immerse oneself in spiritual practices. It is not possible for all the people like us, ordinary people. So this question, the devotees, they posed they asked the master. The master said very compassionately, Good. I am not telling to get away from the world. 
be in the world by all means but know the ways of living in the world how to live in this world that is very important that's the point which we should concentrate then shri ramakrishna tells about the performance of one's duties sure he has got certain duties to be fulfilled that is the way so do your duties by all means it must be done niyatam kuru karma tvam karma you must do lord krishna also tells in the gita but one thing you must not forget do your duties but keep your mind on god if you remove god from mind and go on doing duties instead of getting better you become worse because in the final analysis you become deeply attached in the garb of the duties you are overwhelmed in the worldly entanglements which you would not be able to shake off <clears throat> so then shri ramakrishna gives the example of the maid servant she is working in the house of a rich man she fondles the children there she calls the children of that wealthy man as her own she says you are my boy you are my child i love you very much etc etc she loves no doubt but in the heart of heart her real love is towards her own child towards her own home in the native village and he gives the example of the tortoise it moves about swiftly in the waters but her mind is always on the bank where the eggs are laying so these are the example which shri ramakrishna has given to us to pinpoint a very important fact that we should keep the mind on god and do whatever the things in the world wonderful then he gives the example of how the person who has not developed any love towards god if he just enters into the world he becomes more and more involved and entangled as a result of which he would be facing many dangers various types of uh, sorrows grief etc big list well what shri ramakrishna is pointing out here is first you cultivate the love for god it's very important you must develop a taste for god god's name some of you must develop that quality <clears throat> then once you have that love of god then nobody can disturb you you are 100% safe even though you are in the midst of the ocean of the world you will not be drowned rather you will be floating on the waters 
that's the beauty he gives the example of uh, the jackfruit suppose you cut open the jackfruit with your hands the the milk of the fruit it sticks to your hand it becomes very hard you will be it will be very difficult for you to open open and uh, remove the fruits becomes extremely difficult but then before opening the jack fruit you smear your hands with the oil then you cut open the jack fruit it comes very easily the milk of the fruit doesn't stick to your hand because of the oil in the hand so here sri ramakrishna tells we must develop we must cultivate the love of god this love of god is the oil if you have it then you be in the world you will not be contaminated by worldliness so he is again and again telling first we must cultivate the oil of divine love we must secure it that's very important to get it you must go to solitude you must go to temple you must go to a place where you feel that vibration where you can have that experience where you can recall the spiritual vibrations by constantly living and thinking about god in the holy place the mind acquires knowledge dispassion and devotion very important if these three are there then we are safe and safe what is in the world only two things lust and wealth the whole world is just comprised of these two things so mind is put into these things it is drowned it is drowned in the ocean of lust and wealth it doesn't know how to get up afterwards so that is why shri ramakrishna again gives the example to make it more clear water and milk if the water and milk come together then milk becomes one with water and you will not be able to find out even the trace of the milk if there is a large quantity of water and little quantity of milk but then you turn the milk into curd then churn it make the butter then put that butter in the water it floats you can very distinctly see the butter in the water two separate water is separate butter is separate previously you, you would not distinguish at all what is milk what is water the whole thing appears as water itself so the milk should be in a place where there is no disturbance so that it can be converted into curd that's what here sri ramakrishna is hinting that we should occasionally go into solitude or a holy place or a temple so that the mind gathers its energy so that the mind is not deviated in so many distractions 
that's the way of keeping it in solitude you must be able to spend at least uh, about half an hour or about one hour or so if you keep on doing it regularly you will appreciate the value of it so by doing that it gets into a state of curd then you must make use of that mind thinking about god you will acquire knowledge you will acquire love towards him and this knowledge and love this is called the butter so this mind thus cultured in this manner if this mind is kept in this world it is no more entangled it is free from any kind of distractions so shri ramakrishna in this uh, teachings in these two pages has made it very clear develop cultivate the love of god then do whatever the things in the world side by side use your intellect always have that attitude of discrimination between what is real and what is unreal sharpen your intellect so jnana bhakti both are essential jnana bhakti they are the two wings the bird can fly only it has got two wings so jnana bhakti are the two wings both are necessary for us then our life will be fulfilled we get fulfillment and we will be blessed so far we had read now i shall continue the next para <clears throat> in page number 82 after this uh, <clears throat> water milk analogy is explained <clears throat> then he talks about discrimination together with this you must practice discrimination what is that woman and gold is impermanent it has been explained here woman means not in the literal sense generally people get attracted when they see a woman because of the lustful thoughts it is true even with the case of women with respect to men so the idea is lust and wealth that's the point we should note and it has been explained in the footnote god is the only eternal substance what does a man get with money that's the way of discrimination he is shri ramakrishna is showing even the ways of how to discriminate food clothes and a dwelling place nothing more you can't realize god with its help therefore money can never be the goal of life that is the process of discrimination do you understand master master answered yes sir i recently read a sanskrit play called prabodha chandrodaya it deals with 
discrimination. Then Master said, yes, discrimination about objects. Consider, what is there in money or in a beautiful body? <coughs> Discriminate and you will find that even the body of a beautiful woman consists of bones, flesh, fat and other disagreeable things. Why should a man give up God? <coughs> and direct his attention to such things. Why should man put his mind always on this body? Why should a man forget God for their sake? Master Mahasaya asked, Is it possible to see God? How many times, how many people keep on asking this question? Even if the question is answered, yet there will be people who will be asking the same question. <coughs> that only shows we are not practical in what we think. That is the reason. When this question was asked, is it possible to see God? Sri Ramakrishna gives fine, direct, simple answer. Without any complication, he said, yes, certainly. That means all the doubts about God are shattered. God is there, he is present, he can be seen. He is telling from his own experience. It is not simply theoretical assertion. It is practical experience. And then Master says, living in solitude now and then, repeating God's name and singing his glories, and discriminating between the real and the unreal, these are the means to employ to see him. Without doing any of these things, we want always some miracle to happen. Somebody should come and simply make a magic to us. Look, this is God. Or somebody comes and tells, I myself am God. There are people who talk that way. So people are simply being hoodwinked by all sorts of this uh, false type of uh, expressing the realities. God realization is to be experienced by everyone, by one's own spiritual effort. You have to pass through all this process. You must keep on repeating God's name, go to solitude, spend some time, develop love, then only you will be able to have the vision of God. Again, Master Marcia asked, under what conditions does one see God? It is as if Master Marcia is, is cross-examining Sri Ramakrishna's realization. On the other hand, while answering Master Mahasaya, Sri Ramakrishna is cross-examining Master Mahasaya's quality, what type of man he was. <clears throat> Actually, by pray to the Lord with an intensely yearning heart, and you will certainly see him. People shed a whole jug of tears for wife and children. They swim in tears for money. But who weeps for God? 
cry to him with a real cry then the master sang cry to your mother shyama with a real cry o oh mind and how can she hold herself from you how can shyama stay away <coughs> shyama is divine mother how can your mother kali hold herself away oh mind if you are in earnest bring her an offering of bell leaves and hibiscus flowers lay at her feet your offering and with it mingle the fragrant sandal paste of love how beautifully shri ramakrishna has given the practical ways of developing this love towards god this is all meant for us if we really want to have the vision of god continuing he said longing intense desire to have god to see god the longing is like the rosy dawn after the dawn out comes the sun longing is followed by the vision of god god reveals himself to a devotee who feels drawn to him by the combined force of these three attractions the attraction of worldly possessions for the worldly man the child's attraction for its mother and the husband's attraction for the chaste wife if one feels drawn to him that is to god by the combined force of these three attractions then through it one can attain him so it shows to what intensity our love should be developed until you have that optimum quantity optimum quality of this love until you have it you can't have the realization of god the point is to love god as a mother loves her child the chaste wife her husband and the worldly man his wealth add together these three forces of love these three powers of attraction and give it all to god then you will certainly see him it is necessary to pray to him with a longing heart the kitten knows only how to call its mother crying mew mew it remains satisfied wherever its mother puts it and the mother cat puts the kitten sometimes in the kitchen sometimes on the floor and sometimes on the bed when it suffers it cries only mew 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 that's all it knows but as soon as the mother hears the cry wherever she may be she comes to the kitten what a beautiful example it was sunday afternoon when master mahashe came on his third visit to the master he had been profoundly impressed by his first two visits to this wonderful man he had been thinking of the master constantly and of the utterly simple way he explained the deep truths of spiritual life never before had he met such a man shri ramakrishna was sitting on the small couch the room was filled with devotees who had taken advantage of the holiday 
to come to see the master m had not yet become acquainted with any of them so he took his seat in a corner the master smiled as he talked with devotees he addressed his words particularly to a young man of 19 named narendra nath who was vivekanand in the later years he was a college student and frequented the sadharan brahma samaj his eyes were bright his words full of spirit and he had the look of a lover of god master mahashay guessed that the conversation was about worldly men who looked down on those who aspire to spiritual things the master was talking about the great number of such people in the world and about how to deal with them master to narendra how do you feel about it worldly people say all kinds of things about the spiritually minded but look here when an elephant moves along the street any number of curs and other small animals may bark and cry after it but the elephant doesn't even look back at them if people speak ill of you what will you think of them narendra answered i shall think that dogs are barking at me Sri Ramakrishna answered smilingly, Oh, no, no, you must not go that far, my child. God dwells in all beings, but you may be intimate only with good people. You must keep away from the evil-minded. God is even in the tiger, but you can't embrace a tiger on their account. You may say, Why run away from a tiger, which is also a manifestation of God? the answer to that is those who tell you to run away are also manifestations of god and why shouldn't you listen to them let me tell you a story in a forest there lived a holy man who had many disciples one day he taught them to seek god in all beings and knowing this to bow low before them all a disciple went to the forest to gather wood for the sacrificial fire suddenly he heard the outcry get out of the way a mad elephant is coming all but the disciple of the holy man took to their heels this one particular disciple reasoned that the elephant was also god in another form then why should i why should he run away from it he stood still bowed before the animal and began to sing its praises the mahut of the elephant was shouting run away run away but the disciple did not move the animal seized him with its trunk cast him to one side and went on its way hurt and bruised the disciple lay unconscious on the ground hearing what had happened his teacher and his brother disciples came to him and carried him to the hermitage with the help of some medicine he soon regained consciousness someone asked him you know the elephant was coming why didn't you leave the place but he said our teacher has told us that god himself has taken all these forms of animals as well as men therefore thinking it was only the elephant god that was coming i didn't run away at this the teacher said yes my child it is true that the elephant god was coming but the mahut god forbade you to stay there since all are manifestations of god why didn't you trust the mahut's words he should have heeded the words of the mahut god it is said in the scriptures that water is a form of god but 
some water is fit to be used for worship some water for washing the face and some only for washing plates or dirty linen this last sort cannot be used for drinking or for a holy purpose in like manner god undoubtedly dwells in the hearts of all holy and unholy righteous and unrighteous but a man shouldn't have dealings with the unholy the wicked the impure he must not be intimate with them with some of them he may exchange words but with others he shouldn't go even that far he should keep aloof from such people we shall stop here because sri ramakrishna has clearly hinted uh, how to manage ourselves in this world in spite of so many difficulties we are facing that means we have to develop love towards god which is the most important spiritual practice that's what i feel once you develop that quality then it, everything becomes easy everything becomes easy we have natural love towards money towards properties towards this that but we don't have even 50% of that love towards god why 50% even 25% we don't have so we are facing all problems in the life that's why sri ramakrishna tells again and again go to the solitary place get your mind engaged in thinking about god in praying to him singing his glories etc so in whatever way the mind is given training that way the mind acts if you give spiritual training the mind becomes spiritual if you give worldly training the mind becomes worldly so everything is in our own hands we must know it holy people have come they have shown the way if you don't learn then we are to blame ourselves what the holy people can do what the incarnations can do they have told do like this but we are not doing we want to enjoy the world but negatively we are bringing sorrow ourselves we are instead of enjoying we are suffering only it's only an illusion you must uh, somehow find out the ways of cultivating the love of god so if you try it the in that way naturally the desires etc will come under control desires may come even i may also get desires desires they come and they go i don't give importance to them that's the point they do come don't care it is not that every desire that comes you should do it i don't do it a desire comes i want to visit a, a place where there is a very good music program a desire comes then i will tell i am not bothered about it it may come the desire may come but i don't i don't want it so that's the point so you must assert your uh, mastership you must use your to a certain extent sometimes will power if the desire is too strong so that is the way to uh, fight out the desires sometimes the friends may come and they compel you to go and you have to discriminate is it good is it worthwhile going there on the other hand if i am here i can do little more meditation or i can read some spiritual books or i can do some uh, thinking about god which i would not be able to do all the time after all little time i have got let me use it properly so you must have that kind of attitude that is you must uh, in the mind you must uh, have firm conviction what you wanted that's very important if i want i want really god do you want really god if you want really god then develop the love if you want really god then reduce the desires like that that's the way and moreover uh, unless you try consciously there is every chance that uh, we are being duped by the circumstances that's the point 
that's why shri ramakrishna tells you come in touch with uh, people of like like temperament if at all you have to go to if at all you want to meet some friends have the devotee friends go and meet go talk to them talk about god discuss various spiritual matters have mutual discussion that's the way for example the other day you had a very good retreat in uh, ganges all like minded people you joined together and you had a wonderful discussion it helped you a lot so that's the way so again that keeps keeps you more interested again we shall have another inter- retreat because you develop the taste it is really wonderful it is uh, uh, really uh, making me peaceful so you again and again you would like to have it so such desires are good so you replace the bad desires but by good desires afterwards you must meditate and you must transcend even this good desires also go above all these desires good and bad reject both both should be rejected even good desires also again and again you are forced to act upon according to your desires at one point of time you must be able to transcend you must go above this level of desires there's a state of uh, tranquility samabhav the samabhava is established only when you are above all the desires above good and bad of course that state even to think of it is good so that is the way how we, to, we should uh, do it now the first question the religion and spirituality what uh, you have pointed out that religion is ordinarily uh, meant something mechanical and institutionalized etc etc but shri ramakrishna did not mean religion that way his definition of religion is uh, perfectly clear from his practical experience he has uh, dealt with this subject very thoroughly not that he was incarnation and uh, he did not know our problems it's not that because uh, he actually underwent lot of uh, hardships just to have experience and to convince himself what exactly religion means so what all uh, the teachings he has given to us they are practical expressions of his spirituality so shri ramakrishna himself has defined shri religion as the manifestation of divinity already in man that is called religion not simply dogma or rituals or something else but the point is this then why there are so many institutions in the in name of religion but it is necessary it is just like a nursery where you bring all uh, types of uh, flowers etc in the beginning it is necessary to uh, develop them once it uh, comes to a certain stage of development then it is uh, kept separately and it is given to people uh, who can uh, culture them and have them independently in the same way institution has got its uh, value if you understand properly why it is mechanical because your heart is not there if you know you have come here you want it so you are doing it you must have that attitude i have come to this institution i have come to this ashrama why for spiritual life then why i should not live properly so you must try to uh, search yourself and uh, in fact what is the meaning of uh, shri ramakrishna telling repeat divine name repeat he says repeat of course is mechanical in the beginning but constantly repeating means the mind constantly dwells on that subject and that paves the way in course of time suppose you think of a, a beautiful uh, picture again and again if you think 
then your whole mind dwells on that because you you begin to love that picture by constantly thinking about it that is only repetition constant thinking is but nothing but repeating your thoughts and to that extent you are uh, preventing other thoughts to cross so the institution in a general way it gives certain ways of uh, uh, practicing discipline individually individual responsibility is there each one has got his responsibility he should understand it make use of the ashram make use of the institution utilize it properly and develop inwardly so religion is interior life religion is completely interior life so if you are if you if you don't develop renunciation if you don't develop uh, knowledge if you don't develop dispassion if you don't develop all these uh, divine virtues which are very necessary for uh, spiritual realization then it is no use uh, if you if you are staying in the institution or stay outside wherever you go you can't have any development institution will only helps you instead of staying in the bazaar if you are staying here there's a market difference here shrine is there monastery is there atmosphere is there environment is there everything is there in spite of all these things if you don't do meditation go and sleeping in the whole night in the room day and night go and sleep because nobody sees you you can do anything if you want suppose uh, you are not uh, following uh, properly all the spiritual practices then what the institution can do so sincerity is very important in spiritual life but motivation how it comes some people they understand through suffering some people they uh, become motivated by reading some uh, books some ideas for example if some people read shri ramakrishna's gospel of shri ramakrishna that itself gives good motivation true what i am doing i am come i am completely lost in the world i should not have done this way let me do some practice at least now onwards like that he begins to think 